Hi there and welcome to this video about first normal form in normalization. Now I've got a definition here of first normal form for us. Okay, so a table is in first normal form if, and then we've got four sort of criteria here, if you like, that we need to apply um, to our tables to sort of to get them to that um, stage. So it says if it's if there are no repeating groups. All data values are atomic, okay, both of which we don't really necessarily know what they mean yet. We're going to find out uh, hopefully during this video. And then we've got these two. Uh, each field has a unique name and it has a primary key. Now numbers three and four would apply to second and third normal form as well. So we don't really need to worry too much about those just yet. We will apply them, but the two that we need to focus on first are this idea of repeating groups and atomic values. So first off, let's deal with repeating groups. Now normally when you get given a problem with normalization, you will have a set of data or perhaps a document from the company and we need to sort of have a look at it and try and understand that first. So if I take a look at this data here, okay, now I've put it in a spreadsheet and I've done that because it allows me to quite easily move the data around into different tables and see how it works. And so I think that's it's quite a good sort of visual tool to help you sort of understand the structure a little bit. Now we can see that we've got a table here and if we have a look at it we've got students, so student name, address, etc. Okay, and we've got courses, okay, and it sort of records uh, the course that they have uh, enrolled on and the name of the course, the teacher and the date they completed and the grade they got. So we've got all of that there, so we can see this is basically about students and their courses that are enrolled on and they complete. Okay, and the same here for this student here. So this student, Joseph Harvey, has two courses that he's uh, enrolled on or, or took. Okay, and Maria Woods, she's got uh, three courses there, ICT, Geography and German. So now we sort of understand the, the data a little bit, we can sort of see, you know, actually what's going on. So that's the first thing we need to understand that and then we can have a look at you know where we're at now first off this at the moment in this table as it stands is in what we call unnormalized form so all of these fields here are just all in one big table or one big relation and to show that on my spreadsheet I've created a little sort of grid here from UNF to 3NF and in unnormalized form UNF I've put in the names of the fields from this data here. So all of these fields along the top I've put into my UNF field here and listed them like that. And hopefully I'm going to be going through the process of getting them into first normal form and they'll change in terms of moving to different tables and I'm going to list the different tables in this section here for first normal form. So let's just go back and have a look at what our, sorry, at what our thing here is. So it says there are no repeating groups now, if we have a look at the data here, what we can see is that we've got, if you like, a one-to-many relationship. We've got one student can be enrolled on or can take many courses. We've got Joseph Harvey takes two courses, Maria Woods takes three courses. So we can see there's many courses to one student. And normally there'll be something like that in the data that you are given for a normalization. Because most data in most systems has relationships such as that. So if we have a look at that, then the other thing is I could turn around and say, well, you know, these values here under course code, course name, teacher, date completed and grade, repeat down the page, if you like, so horizontally down the page, um, or vertically down the page, I should say, okay, for, you know, for however many courses are for a particular student. But sometimes even that gets a little bit sort of, you know, are, are we sure we, we, we know, is, is that really a repeating group? And I think the best way I can use to explain it is to take one of these records for, for Joseph Harvey, in this case. And if we have a look, this is just a, a snippet of the data from the previous thing here. And we've got his record here, and we've got these two courses there. Now, if, in, well, in, in most database tables, we'd want that to be, or a record should be on one line. OK, and we can see we've ended up with two lines and we've got a big gap here where there should be some data. So that's not really right. So if we were to try and put this into one line in a database for Joseph Harvey, then what we'd have to do is we'd have to repeat a set of fields to make that happen. We'd have to repeat this set of fields again. So we've got course code here, I've highlighted those in blue. And then I've got 
the same set of fields here for the second set of data, this set here, is there. And we can see that I've had to repeat a group of fields, okay, in order to make that work. So that is my repeating group. Okay, so I've got a repeating group of attributes if I wanted to put it in my nine, and so those are the things I need to deal with. So when we do that, okay, and we sort out a repeating group, what we do is we effectively, we take it, I'm going back to this one here, okay, we take that set of data, okay, and we remove it, okay, and put it in its own little table. So I'm going to move that just down to there, in fact I'm going to move it over by one. And just double click, make that sort of fit in. Okay, so I do that and I remove the repeating groups. Okay, and what I then do is I'm going to take a copy of the initial identifier, in this case the student number. Okay, copy that and I'm going to put it with the data that I took out. Okay, so I remove the repeating group with a copy of the primary key. Okay. And I'm left with up here, then I can get rid of these empty rows. So I could get rid of these. Okay, so I've got student number in, or you know, the, the student information there. And I've got this here, and all I do with these is I just repeat, in the blank gaps underneath, I just repeat the values. So I'm just using the fill handle there, because I've got letters with these, so that's fine. And we can see that's now my two tables as they stand. So I've now removed the repeating group. So how does that look over here in my table over here is I need to put these in. So the first table I've got, if I just go back, is student number, name, address one, town, postcode, gender. Okay, so I'm just going to copy these across. I'm just going to copy the fields across. So address postcode and gender okay leave a gap okay leave a bit of a gap there actually okay so making it clear and in the second thing here I've got my student name student number course code course name etc so I'm going to put those in so student number course code so student number copy that uh, put it down here actually uh, course code and all of the rest of those underneath there so course name teacher take completed Great. Okay. So I've now removed the repeating group. Okay. So I've now no longer got any of any problems that with regards to repeating data. So if I go back to my thing here, there are no repeating groups. Yes, we've achieved that. So let's have a look at the next one. So all data values are atomic. So what on earth does that mean? Well, atomic basically means is is. It's obviously a scientific term with regards to the atom, and it's it's the concept of saying it, sh it can't be broken down any further. Okay. Now I know you may turn around to me and go, well, atoms can be broken down further, and you, you'd be right. But it's just in terms of the the this database scenario, it's saying well, the the data can't be broken down further, meaning that we haven't got values in any fields where it looks like it should be two fields rather than the one. So we might have you know, uh, more than one sort of value in there. So let's actually have a look at what we've got in our data. So if we have a look um, along the top table here, so we do each table at a time. So if we have a look here, student number, okay, that, well that's obviously just a number, so that, that, or a code, so that can't be broken down any further. If we have a look at the name though, we can see that that's actually a forename and a surname. Now, we then have to ask the question, well, do, do we need to know the forename and surname? Well, it depends really on, on the actual system itself. It depends on, on the, the requirements of the user. But you'd certainly expect that in a system like this where we're looking at um, students and their courses is that we might want to be able to search perhaps for a student by their surname. 
sort of seems like a fairly sort of uh, standard thing you'd want to do. Now that becomes a lot more difficult if the surname's hidden in a larger field. So in this case I think it would make sense to break name down into uh, student sort of uh, forename and surname. Now when we look at the address okay we could look at this one and say well does this break down and you know you could make the argument and say well we could have the number of the house and then the, the, the road and in some systems they may want to do that. But in our system, in reality, it's unlikely that we're going to need that for a student database. We're not really going to need to have the, the number of the, of the house separate from the actual road itself. So that can stay as it is. The town, it's just one thing there, postcode value in there, and gender, so those are fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the name into two separate fields. Okay, so uh, what I'll probably do is I'm just going to move this over. Uh, in fact, actually, I won't. I'll, I'll put them in here. So if I insert this here, before I do anything else, I'm just going to move these back. Okay, and put this in as forename and surname. Okay, and if I just move these across. And okay, so that's done there. Must remember to do this over here. So my name, if I just move these down a second. Okay, so this has become forename and surname. And I'll just use my <coughs> excuse me, just use my format painter to turn that back as it is. So let's have a look at the next table. So we need to do it to both tables. So if we have a look on here we've got a uh, student number so again we've decided student number is okay. Course code, again that's just a number so that can't be broken down. The course name, in this case that's just the name of the course so that's fine. Now let's have a look at teacher. Now teacher we seem to have what seems to be an, a code, so the number of the teacher by, by the looks of things and then we've got the initial of the teacher and then we've got their surname. So again that seems to be broken down into either one or two fields. Now again we would probably potentially want to be able to look up a teacher's surname so it looks like we've got the code, the uh, initial and then the surname so we'll put these in. So if I insert some rows here Okay, and we've got so we've got teacher, let's call this teacher ID, and then we've got teacher init for their initials and teacher surname. Okay, and so the code's okay, uh, and I'm just gonna paste that in there and just basically work my way through the data. Uh, do the same there. Yeah, well. In fact actually that's the same isn't it? So I can just pull that down and then uh, Okay, now obviously you don't have to go about doing these with this sort of thing with the data, but I think it helps to illustrate the table that we end up with. Uh, so that was, uh, yeah. these move across to the right hand side because they're no longer uh, values, or they, well, they're no longer text values, so I'm going to put those in there. So if I do these now, and let's just get rid of uh, these, so just move these back. Okay, so now I have split these up. So teacher ID, teacher init, teacher surname. So I'm going to put that onto my thing here. So give myself a bit of space. So teacher ID, teacher init, and teacher surname. Okay, and just put these in. 
Right, so now I've got my tables like that. I've removed any non-atomic fields, so my data or all data is now atomic. So all data values are atomic, so that's a yes. Each field has a unique name, so let's go back and have a look in our table. So I've got student number, four names, surname, address one, town, postcode, gender. So within this table, all of those values are or all of those field names are unique. And then we have a look at this one. We've got the student number, course code, course name, teacher ID, in it, surname, date, completed grade. So within this table as well, they're unique. Now you might look at it and go, well, hold it, that's not unique. We've got two fields there with the same name, but that's fine because they're in different tables. Don't forget, first num form, normal form says a table is in first normal form if. So we're only looking at the one particular table. So each field has a unique name. Yes, it does. Okay, and then we need to sort out the primary key. So a primary key, if we have a look, so a primary key basically needs to be a unique identifier for each record. Now this is where we really comes to fruition, or if you like, a real advantage of doing it this way by breaking up the data and putting the values in, is we have a look at this and we can see, well, the student number for this table seems to be the obvious primary key. Both values here are unique, so that's fine. So we're going to go into our normalization thing here okay and student number we'll put PK next to that so there's first primary key then we get onto the next table okay and we've got to look at this and say well we can see that student number on its own can't be a primary key because we've got two values there that are repeated and so therefore it's not unique and then we can look at well okay well what about the course code well I can see the code here for German, I've got that twice, and I've got the code for IT twice as well. So I can't really use that. But what we could do is perhaps use the two fields together to produce our primary key, which is called a composite key. And this is where the, the understanding the data comes in. If we look at this and we say, well, is there a possibility for, or, or is it within our database for a a student, a particular student, to take the same course more than once. Now, at the moment, it seems that that's not the case. Okay, we certainly haven't got any records in our data, in our original data, that actually tell us that a, t a student can take a course more than once. But we would probably be go go back to the person who's asking us or, or to gave us information about the system, and we would ask them that question. But based on the data we've got at the moment, we could say that these two fields together provide unique values. So even though you know, even though we've got some students taking the same course and students taking more than one course, we can see that together no two pairs here are the same. So therefore I'm able to use the two together as a composite key. So I'm going to go back to my normalization here and put my primary key in. Now just for just for reference, had it been the case that we could have a student taking a course more than once, then perhaps we'd need another field like uh, perhaps the start date for their course. Okay, so as soon as it puts in, we saw what the start date is, and then we might include these two fields and a start date if it was the case that a student could take the same course more than once. We're assuming here that they can't, and so therefore that becomes our primary key. So we go back to our first normal form. It now, both tables now have primary keys, so that's a yes. And now we've completed first normal form for that set of data.